Evet, Pablo Escobar'ın müzesi burası. Müzesi ve evi. Ne güzel evi varmış ya. Arka bahçesinde de birçok şey var. Bir tam güzel izledim ama bir içeri gireceğiz. Bakalım neler göreceğiz. Böyle bir içeriye giriyoruz. Burası kahve şey. Bir şeyler için kafe gibi bir yer. Ama kafenin içinde işte şapkaları falan, bardakları yani ona ait her şey satılıyor. Açacaklar. İşte buzdolabı için şeyler, magnetler. Bileklik. Allah bardak altı. Kalemlik. Defter. Tişört. Ve kendimizi de çekelim be. Öyle. Şal. Pilsen. Pablo Escobar'ın birası bile var. Pilsen'le anlaşmanın galiba Pilsen onların birası. Ben de diyorum ki bu bireyi ne kadar çok seviyorum ya. Money or world? Money or world? Uh huh. Again. This world, yeah. Bullets. Money or world? Money or world? Uh huh. Amy, are you saying the word right? Bullets. Money or bullets? Money or bullets? Uh huh. Now. Would you tell me about it? I'm gonna try again. I'm gonna try again. Oh, ah, okay. I understand you right now. Right now I understand. Okay, right now I understand. Please come in. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's go. Be careful here. Ben videoda görmüştüm evet böyle bir şeyler söylüyorlardı. İşte onun ismi bir şey söylüyorsun. Yeah, I understand you right now because I don't remember. I watched before in the YouTube like the video, and then you ask like the Arab people, and then you say the magic, the thing, you know, and then it is open. Okay. Like this. Nobody could be sure about the year when he started. 
but for sure, when he was 29 years old, he was working in this business. His face looks hard because it's a really, really difficult business. He was trying to take, to get all the control. Now his face looks relaxed, 1982, because Paolo now had got all the power and he had all the control. When he became senator, he stayed working in the, board, uh, in the Congress almost two years. These pictures, um, years later, and finally this one, maybe the last one, when Paolo was taken out of jail. Let me know what do you think. How old do you think Pablo? Do you think that Pablo is here? 44, 45. What do you think? 48. 48. Yeah, I think it's around 44. Absolutely, Pablo yeah. looked older. Yeah, he was way older. Because do you can imagine the Pablo's life? Persecuted. The people are trying to kill him without peace. We love freedom. Now, this picture, Pablo was 42 years old. 42. And he was older. Yeah, I'm very close. Well, friends, <laughs> let's feel this face. Not only because I told you that it's bar blue, you have to feel, okay? Holding this part, you can open, you can not. Just do it, let me know. Herkes gittikten sonra dedim ki ben düşük kapıyı biraz şeyini yapayım. Bak kapının şeyi ne var? Sürpriz ne var? Müzik diyecektim yani. Ağır ama gerçekten dediği gibi. Ve adam çıkıyor ya. Babalar babası. <gülüyor>
This was the beginning of the worst episode in the Colombian history, the war between the two parties. And friend, Mr. Roberto understood that Pablo needed just, just what the people told him. The original accountant has had been a Gustavo Gaviria, his cousin. But now, because Gustavo was the second brain of this organization, Pablo needed Gustavo fighting beside him. Because now there were two wars, not only one. The first one against the government had begun in 1985. But now the second one had started against radical Two wars at the same time, Pablo was fighting at the same time. And he accepted. He became a accountant. And only the last three years, 1988 and 1991, when finally, Mr. Pablo Escobar had a secret appointment with the Colombian president, Cesar Gaviria Tupito, to go to the jail voluntarily. Mr. Pablo asked Denying all extradition agreements here, and the Colombian constitution was changed at 1991, satisfying the public's requirements. The second one, being in his own jail, because Mr. Pablo had fought against police for more than 10 years. And Gaviria said, Yes, let's do it. At least one thing, the leader could want win. Seeing finally where this man, Mr. Pablo Tomar, will be. He was fighting six years hidden and nobody saw, nobody knew where this serve was. Incredible. Well, friends, he built his jail. He bought a mountain, but he built the jail not at the top of here. Yeah, because he laid a little part of mountain as a wall, defending the jail from air attacks. And <clears throat> my boss says, the jail never was a jail. No, never there was a jail. No, it was just a luxury place. Uh, he says it was a luxury place, a luxury farm, beautiful farm, um, where Mr. Pablo Escobar could live safe and protected for the Colombia government. Yes, first time in jail for the winter four, in 1991, uh, they received five years for sentence. Mr. Pablo had declared his charge because this country had no evidence. He raised no clues. It's a good way to help from corruption to mafia. We can have mafia if we don't have corruption. They are two sides, but the same business. The government. And he was informed about the real purpose of Gaviria's uh, president. Gaviria was working again with the United States to have new extradition agreements. And also, Gaviria was uh, planning moving Mr. Pablo from his own jail to other legal jail in Bogota. He never was ready to give up. Never. He never was ready to be captured or be sent to the United States. Either he preferred dying than go to the United States jail. He had a famous phrase. I prefer to be in Colombia. 
than a jail in the United States. And well, they escaped. And later, the United States came here with CIA, FBA, FBA. and the EPA. The, the yeah. Friends Interpol offering a $10 million reward just to receive information. The goal to them never was killing public, no. It was capturing a lot of people because they wanted extra the power to the United States as a price, you know? Pablo died, they couldn't avoid this. <clears throat> but three months after they had escaped, Mr. Roberto gone back to jail following a Pablo all he did go die in front of justice, but was following a Pablo all because he wanted another agreement. And he said his brother trying to prepare the other way from inside the jail. And now nobody was interested. Remember the reward and all the group wanted the same business. He received for three years working inside Medellin Cartel, 30 years in jail. He only stayed 14. Why? Well, when Mr. Pablo died December 2nd, 1993, 16 days later, Mr. Roberto received a bomb inside his cage. Was sent from police. The bomb was already. Mr. Roberto could recognize uh, that the little was an explosive device and he knew it and explode so near for him. He's blind and dead now because he's a uh, terrible explosion. <clears throat> he almost died because the corrupt people working in the government, they wanted to close his mouth forever. Being accountant, he could know about all these secrets, this side, corruption. Who was the people in the people working in the government? But from the charges, the, the charges helping They could find, they could find. Yeah. And well, he survived, he was so confused. He almost died, and later, years later, he understood that he couldn't receive this count, giving him focus. He did that he was careful, because he tried to say things that all that he knew, but he couldn't say all. How did Mr. Roberto writing two books. If you like reading, friends, we have these two books here in English. Yeah. Maybe we want to see if it's possible? Of course. Oh, okay. For later. Okay. Later, when, when later. we finish, I can show you the oh, story. Super good. Friend, the book My Brother Pablo talks about his life with Mr. Pablo and all about the business since the beginning. They were written with the journalist. Remember that he was uh, blind already. The journalist, the best from Colombia and the best from the US, and they, they wrote, they were co-authors. And the other book is the King Pablo Escobar. This book talks about all inside Medellin Cartel. They are complementary and the government considered that the Reto had gained enough information. He was led in freedom at 2005 after 14 years in jail. They discovered 16 years from his long sentence. And now 
is a free man. He's a free man and he, uh, he lives here in peace and without enemies because his son, his son got the peace. The peace between Escobar family and all the Cali Cartel members' families. After the father's death, one year later, Medellin, uh, Cali Cartel was destroyed. And six months later, the war continued between the families. There were no responsibles. If you, if you think the real responsibles, they were burned or Captured. But they have to live with the consequences to be related with people who used to work in this business. He did. It was not easy. He faced the responsibility to represent of re representing his family in all these conversations. And finally, the two families, they could find a good agreement to give this satisfying the two sides. That's why they come here. Yes? He is free, healthy, and he's 75 years old. Mrs. Gloria Inez, his preferred sister, she lives here, she's 73 years old. Pablo now will be a 72 years old man. Yes? Argemiro. He lives in Rio Negro again. Okay. And Mrs. Alba Marina and Mrs. Luz Maria, they live here. Luis Fernando is the youngest brother. He died when he was so young, 19 years old. When? He died. Yes. Yeah. 1977. Because his brother, Mr. Pablo, gave the best Christmas gift. To this guy. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Yes. With the car. Yes, the black jeep. Yeah, yeah, black jeep. I remember. The, yes. The, the Did you see the, the movie? Yeah, yeah. It's okay. So we have to think at night. Nineteen seventy-seven. Later, when they have have uh, a little fun, of course, and and coming back home, with Fernando dropped Pablo Escobar so and was uh, assigned to fly from Panama to Colombia, landing inside Hacienda Annapolis, transporting only money, mm -hmm. maybe 60 or 70 million dollars by flight. Why? The plane had to fly once by week. After the flight trip, this one became too small for me. Yeah, I'm magic. Yes, I think it is very yeah. good. Because this one became too small for money only after the flight trip. Pablo understood how the, the business would grow. Yeah, it is very big guy, right? Later, <laughs> just five trip uh -huh. from Panama. Yes. 
from Panama, Panama to Colombia to Colombia. Just five trips. Yeah. That's why Pablo took the plane to remember the beginning of his entire. Yeah. And he put the plane at the top of the gate in Naples Ranch. And Naples Ranch was his operation center. Have you seen before the white arch with the, this plane at the top? No? No. No, I'm going to I, tell you a, a, a I think so, like, yeah, I, I know a little bit less because mm. I go to military like the air military. Uh, uh, like we are make it like 15 15 month mm -hmm. 15 a month yeah I, I i do but just i see in the mm -hmm. like the in the life but i never in mm -hmm. yeah it is good now napoles ranch mm -hmm. was his most famous property was his operation center. Mm -hmm. The place where Pablo could work, hidden, protected, and safe. Located just at the middle of the road away between Bogota and Medellin. Four hours and a half far from Medellin and far from Bogota. With an amazing zoo and uh, lakes similar to the Cancun beaches, artificial Spain. lakes, aiding artificial lakes, different um, rivers, artificial rivers and pools, and maybe um, 10 clandestine, clandestine uh, landing trucks, only one legal landing truck. Uh, from his personal jet. The government uh, gave permission to this landing truck after two years knowing about the Pablo's real business. Corruption again, yes? I told you before, corruption. Yeah. Napoles Ranch, the house where the family used to stay. Mm -hmm. The pool is the letter P. Because what's the capital letter? Mm -hmm. Pablo Escobar, the, the helicopter. The helicopter was used to to let that the children could jump from this helicopter to the pools and lakes. <laughs> so good. You can stop saying <laughs> The legs, okay. like because this mural. His little baby girl. Amazing, big the legs. Love the animals. That then is the person I did. To please her. The first year right? in Latin So Latino special, America. like for the country. Mm -hmm. So started getting from every part of the world. The ranch mm, was ended all the construction since 1976 to 1978 when he opened the ranch he could work successfully here having meetings, meetings with important people from Bogota people working in the government or from other countries um, Closing all deals that they could need. But at 1989, the army broke inside, destroying everything. Everything, and I mean, the house now is just a ruin. The Prince doesn't exist. The 1,200 animals died. Or escape. Only one is still inside Napoles Ranch. A uh, female hippo. And what? The government has the property. They destroyed everything looking for money. And they said that they never found the money. Do you believe this? No. <laughs> it's now a beautiful place to go. But there is nothing related with the Pablo Escobar history. That's why they sold the plane. And my boss could buy three years ago. Because now let's talk about this car. Of course. This car is Mercedes 500. 
From 1982, when Pablo was senator, and he was still here, the first attempt against his life. From Colombia government, according all the searches that they did, trying to discover the responsible, they couldn't get one name. No, but their conclusion was was the government because they were afraid of Pablo because Pablo had got his place in the parliament without the opening of political parties, independent parties. The people loved him. He had helped too much people here. He had money, youngness, the love of all the people. And he had ideas opposite to their economic interests. For example, uh, getting studies for free at the university for poor people. Or houses for free to homeless people or denying the exhibition of women. This happened in 1982 in Medellin. Here, 90 shots against the bulletproof car with four different weapons. No more than 10 seconds lasted this terrible attack. Pablo was sat here. As you can see, he only could survive thanks to the bulletproof technology. And this technology comes from the United States. The level of bulletproof was 0 that 3 plus, and that was the same used for Ronald Reagan, the president in the US. No. Three centimeters of bulletproof glazes with 80 millimeters of iron inside the doors protecting the people, the roof, under the car protecting the gas tank and also the motor. One ton and a half weights. Wow. This is the first Paulus racing car. Mm -hmm. In 1978, Paulus started his performance in car racing and he became really good. And he used to drive his own cars. We can see here Simca 1000. His first one, Marlboro is the main sponsor here, but it's ironic because when he started his uh, criminal career with his cousin Gustavo Gaviria, they used to be Marlboro cigarette smokers. Teddy Bear Bikes, Teddy Bear Bikes now is a big factory, bike factory. The owner was the Pablo's oldest brother, Mr. Roberto Escobar Gaviria, nicknamed Little Bear. Mm. Okay, Manizales, the city where all, with, uh, where all the races uh, happen. Pablo driving uh, Renault Coupe. Renault Ford, one of his preferred cars, Porsche 911, his preferred car, became the winner driving his Porsche, yeah. holding his award. The man beside him is Gustavo Gaviria He is a nephew of Mrs. Armilda, his mother. Pablo with Mrs. Armilda, they were so close. Mm -hmm. Another bullet is Mercedes. Mercedes 280 from 1984 has the same technology of the older Mercedes. The level of bulletproof was 0 3 plus. Remember, 3 centimeters of bulletproof laser? with 8 millimeters of iron inside the doors protecting all the car and even Kevlar. The same tissue is from the Lepuk jackets. Now, Pablo was interested in having the best communication technology and he had. Let's see this. The microphone near the driver. Yeah. All the cars were communicated. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a super good idea. Yes. Because he is really smart. Because he was so smart. Yeah, really, I know. Furniture stashes. Great idea to have money, weapons, or documents hidden. Let me show you. 
Nobody can see the space now. It looks as a normal desk. Uh, one morning, we can have him. Uh, this is... My this boss is. put the glaze to protect the bills because people like you come in here, they decide leaving the bills as a remain with messages. Yeah, yeah. For example, if you want to be from your country, original from your country, no only dollars. Yeah, yeah, I know. Turkish lira. Yes, Turkish money. You can write a message and you can put here. Hi. Beş lira falan versiniz. You know? Yeah, we have. Let me have the pen. A couple minutes. Kalem getirecek şimdi. Evet. <gülüyor> Hadi gel paraları atalım. This uh, real situation because they had two goals. Of course, the first one or all of this goal could be to get the credits, okay, to be the heroes in front of all public opinion. Well, then my boss Nicolas, uh, he says that Pablo died for suicide, and they covered this real situation to have the money, the ten million dollars reward, because. Suicide as cause of murder never could be a good reason to receive the ten million dollars reward. My boss says, okay, how do we know now that Pablo died for suicide? And my boss answered, because I have the proof. My boss Nicolas, the Pablo's oldest uh, nephew, and at, at 2006, he exhumed the Pablo's body. Why? Because I told you before that my boss worked hard to get the peace, yes? And the peace was the, the best opportunity to receive one doctor that had been part of the original autopsy team. The man came to talk with Nicholas and he said, I'm here for grateful. Your uncle Pablo, he paid my studies at the university when I was young but poor. He helped me. I could have a life, have a life, better life. Thanks your uncle. Grateful. I think that the family need needs and to know how did Mr. Pablo die for suicide, and he started giving details about the hurt inside his right ear because there was a little bit of gunpowder traces inside. And Nicola said, "Okay, stop. Let's prove this because I saw the same hurt, but now." we can have the books and he exhumed his body two doctors wrote the final second autopsy form according these uh, two doctors the cause of murder is suicide all the gunpowder traces expected were found over the crane because without the skin they could see all the, all the gunpowder traces mm -hmm. At the beginning, it was no easy seeing all the dust because there was inside. Yeah, yeah, very close. Mm -hmm, very close, the diffi difficult to see. Yeah. The government knows and always has known that Pablo died for suicide. Yeah, they are no. Yes, this is the only reason to have this museum opened 
to have our bus free. Yes. He has proofs. And that's all. Yeah. yeah. When they were young, uh -huh. Pablo and his cousin Gustavo, they used to be rubber bands. They were doing this maybe two years, since 1970, maybe 72. They never were captured. Pablo ride the motorcycle without mask as normal guy, mm -hmm. and hunting the motorcycle by different colors each side. Why? Right. Police never could get a universal about the color. Yeah, he's very smart. Yes, depending it on the is, side. Yeah, of maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Maybe he said, ah, it is black one, the motorcycle. Yes. He is making the change. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. All the people said, no, you're right. You're lying. Yeah. What's red? <laughs> red <laughs> one. Hey, the 49 tons of drug, Canadian design, amphibious, flying maybe six to ten times by week. Which 9,000 kilos of drug by fly, and each kilo, um, the price was $50,000. 50,000. Ecuador, transporting coca paste from Ecuador, mm -hmm. half ton of coca paste. Half ton. Panama, Panama. the Soviet Minister Marine. Soviet because they have invented anti radar painting, and this was perfect to this illegal business, okay? The landing truck inside Hacienda Napolis with officer permission from JET, the white arms with the plane at the top, that plane that we have. Yeah, like this. And the arms now is not here on the entrance, is now in front of the house, the ruin of the house. Remember that they destroyed all the house yeah. at 1989. Damaged wheels from planes, these damaged wheels, mm -hmm. people have it and now in free, they have to send all the drug here in different kinds of treatments. Like inside. Inside the wheels. Yeah, yeah. At the beginning this size and later this other size. <laughs> <laughs> For free, perfect way to help the poor people, the most known uh, neighborhood. Before, yeah. the name was Medellin without Tugurios, Tugurios poor houses, mm -hmm. and they received the houses. They used to live in the, like, the trash. Yes, the, the trash place, and uh, the trash place are burned, and later they, they lost everything. Yeah. Pablo helped them, and then he used one of his lands to build the neighborhood. Yeah. Medellin without Tugurios at the beginning and later uh, Pablo Escobar neighborhood the soccer fields for free mm -hmm. here. The pure communities received the help and uh, in fact the best goalkeeper from Colombia, Rene Ivita, he comes from a Pablo soccer field. These people, this is the same they went to the election and voted for Pablo. Yes. He was the, the candidate salute, with more which is um, love of people, more votes same. than others. He comes from a Pablo soccer field. Yeah, so good. When Pablo saw this guy playing in one of his soccer fields, and he was young but poor, only with his incredible talent, he recommended this guy with this team, his preferred team. Yeah, Independiente so Medellin, that is a good Yeah, before. I see. Yes. He went to the Pablo's jail several times. They were friends, always. Higuita was grateful. Yeah, so good. And the government arrested him, uh, confiscated his properties. And now, um, he, after two months, was let free. He received back all his properties because he never had business with Pablo, only friendship. Yeah. Maradona, Maradona was the best goalkeeper around the world in yeah. 1991. And he also came here. He visited Pablo Escobar. He said that when, when he arrived to Argentina, his country, he yeah. said, okay, to the journalist, I didn't know who was Pablo Escobar. I don't have time to watch TV. <laughs> Nobody could believe. Yeah, yeah. Toy because he saw the film The Spy Who Loves Me, this movie, James Bond. Yeah. And he wanted 10 of these. It is 
is not original. It is second. Ah, it is not, not original. original. He is by like this. Is new. Is new, but yeah. Pablo bought ten, ten red bikes. They were the first ten red bike factory. This was just prototype, and never had been factory. Uh, the prototype, but the Pablo's guys they could got the ten red bikes from the factory through the producers. The producers they pay too much money, but this never was a, a trouble. So all that Pablo wanted, Pablo got it, of course. And let's see. Pablo's jail. They were built in the jail when they took the picture. The picture shows a little part. The jail was big, 30,000 square meters, with this electric fence control from inside. I know. I the place was a luxury hotel from Dubai. It never yeah. was a jail. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and this picture shows Pablo inside a cage. But if you if you think about this, how could Pablo wear normal clothes instead of uniform? <laughs> I mean, and what about the Russian hat? Showing that he had connection with Soviet Union. The Soviet Union, they were the worst United States enemies at 1992. This picture was sent to the United States to prove that he was in jail. Huh? And this decay was intentional. Pablo is showing that his gate was open. This piece is the same piece. Yes. His case was opened, and he was the boss inside his cage. He's inside his, his uh, own jail, his luxury hotel from the back. And the eagle takes you to a seal or cemetery. My boss was there every day to show it to be or not. Living this history was part of his life. When he was a, only a four years old child, his uncle Pablo started his individual business. When he grew up, his family became the most rich family around the world. And he lived the best, all the luxury, all the money, but also the worst, the kidnapping, the persecution, the torture. And now he knows that having less money than before, now he is happy because he now has peace. Okay? That's why he showed you this. Yeah. So good. When he was 44 years old, mm -hmm. his family said, You were a conqueror of impossible dreams beyond the lane you symbolize. And you know the real essence of your life. 